Good afternoon. This is an afternoon broadcast, hence good afternoon. Um, if you haven't seen my broadcast before, I'll explain more about what I'm doing later on. But I'm going to start off at the beginning of saying that if you win, you might actually be losing. And that's kind of what the topic's about today. Um, this, re this has been recorded or being broadcast in the midst of the coronavirus experience. And that's what triggered, <laughs> triggered this topic. So as the title hints at, there may be something wrong with being right, or it may be something losing about winning. And I'll give you an example of what I'm explaining first, and then I'll, maybe you can relate to this, and then I'll give you some solutions and ways and how-tos, etc., etc., in a moment. So first of all, where do I want to begin? First of all, I'm very aware, <laughs> very aware, that people have positions where they stand on this experience with coronavirus. Now, this is the example I'm using, but frankly, this could be d applicable to gov government positions, gov positions about money, positions about policy, I mean, or is it government politics, positions about employment. But right now, it's about coronavirus. That's, that's what we're dealing with right now. So my <laughs> awareness, I'll be polite, is that people have been holding positions again some are on the position that it was a man-made intentional thing that happened some are about some are on the focus that it's the end of the world some are dealing with the fact that it doesn't really have not really as bad as the flu so don't even worry about it ignore it people are like wearing masks not wearing masks a lot of people are in positions and i'm not going to get into where i stand because i can't prove that i'm right or wrong either and i'm not going to try or attempt that even but what happens is when people get very attached to positions, they do something <laughs> interesting. They tend to make other people wrong. When somebody, and it may be somebody you know, probably not you, but somebody you know, is fixated on a position in a particular case, and I know people are doing that right now, which is why I'm very aware of it, where they're so attached to their position that everybody else's perspective, everybody else's perspective, is correspondingly off base. It is wrong. It is a lose they should they should not be in position that I'm right they're wrong type stuff and this is the problem when you start getting this place of being right to be right you tend to have to make somebody else wrong and that's the win-lose uneven seesaw experience in the in the conscious community personal growth industry we talk about win-win well this is definitely win-lose and I may get to a win-win later on we'll see how this unfolds but my, my point I want to give you, this invitation I want to give you, this suggestion I want to give you, is if you're being very attached to a position around this virus, for example, maybe you want to hold that position slightly looser. Because again, when you hold a position too tightly, when you fixate on it, you're holding it really, really, really tightly, you're actually putting yourself in a position where you can't see somebody else's perspective. You are not able to, because you're so fixated on this thing, that what somebody else says about over there, you can't see. You're not able to because you're so fixated. The second part of that is when you are so fixated in one position, anybody else's or any other position that's being held by somebody else, even a loved one, must be wrong to validate your being right. I hope you make it make sense to you. This is a fundamental part, basically, of human, human behavior. Is when you start positioning yourself in the place of right, you have to make somebody else wrong for that to be valid. Because it's, it's a contrast thing, black and white. One thing's right. It's like it's it's in most people's awareness, it's impossible for one person to be right about one position, someone who a different position and also be right. There's the analogy actually I'll drop on that now. There is the metaphor, analogy, of the idea about describing an elephant. If you had three blind people trying to describe an elephant, this is an old, old um adage. Where basically if you had three people trying to try and describe an elephant and both and they're blindfolded, not say blind blindfolded. One would say it's like a snake. It's 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 long, it's sinuous, it moves around, and that's because they're holding the trunk. Another person says the elephant's like a tree because it's touching on its legs and it's very thick so it around circumference and it's very rough, like the bark of a tree. Third person says, no, 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 no. It feels like it's a it's a twig because they're grabbing hold of the tail. All three of them may be right in what they're describing, but all three of them are missing the point of the whole thing. So. When you say you're right about something, be careful you don't um, paint yourself into a corner. 
Because a lot of times people don't want to choose to be right because they want to win the situation. They want to win the victory. They want to be ahead of the game. They want to be better than other people. But to be better than other people, you've got to make other people worse than you. Again, this is a contrast piece. And if you've been following me for a while and watching my talks and know what I'm teaching right now, I'm focusing about self-mastery. And the challenge with self-mastery is it requires you to become less invested in other people. It's the price you pay to have autonomy and ownership of your own life is your, your attachment to other people's feelings, other people's attitudes, other people's positions, other people's relative level to you has to be let go of. We're in a situation right now, with the sake of the coronavirus, where there's a lot of things being put out there, both from social media posts to articles, to videos, to lectures, to conversations, to conflicts, to arguments, to et cetera, et cetera, et cetera that are making it hard to be friends with some people. Maybe that's my experience, not yours, I don't know. But it makes it very hard to really start seeing the loving underneath it. And it's interesting because I, I jumped on board with a friend of mine because a friend of mine who is a very, is a good, I mean, I've known 15 years, created, created a, a movie or part one of a movie that basically supposed to blow the lid off this thing. It's like a whistleblower thing about the coronavirus. And so I immediately jumped on with it going, oh yeah, this must be right because it's my friend doing it. Having done a lot of review, I'm starting to see it differently. And the truth is, I almost lost a friendship with somebody else because they were looking at this thing from one perspective, I wasn't. And I was attached to being right. Excuse me. I was attached to supporting my friend and being justifiably, in my mind, right about something that might have been wrong. Yeah, right about something that might be wrong. Think about that one for a moment. I've since had time to do more research and I've actually pulled myself back from the edge of that commitment and found a way to find medium ground with a friend of mine because her opinion from mine was very different. And it's, it was actually a point where I had to let go of the situation and become amenable to her perspective. Not necessarily agreeing with it, but amenable. And this is the thing. Shifting out of the being right to being to win means you not, just, not necessarily have to lose or be wrong, but you've got to be amenable. Or I should say, you might want to choose to be amenable, to be in a place where you have a certain place of um, embracing, accepting, and appreciating somebody else's perspective. I actually posted a video this morning on my personal page. Um, you can go look for if you want. My name on my personal page, same as my business page. A video that was a one an hour and 20 minute conversation between a guy who actually is known to be an anti-vaxxer, and I'm not talking about him at all. He was the interviewer. He didn't jump on there, thankfully. The person he interviewed is a very smart man who is a scientist, doctor, naturalist. He's done so many things. Young guy, actually, which is kind of surprising. But he said some incredibly useful information in that hour and 20 minutes, including the last 15 minutes, which was a, a beautiful journey, a beautiful exp expression of the journey of life. And sitting in that last segment, for me, was so viscerally uplifting and also recognizably clear that being right doesn't align to any of that. To recognize that this is all a gift. And so the coronavirus experience can be looked at through the lens of it being a gift too. Now I'm going to expand that one a little bit because that sounds like, whoa, what do you mean? The attachment to being right is starting to show people's true, true colors. Watching the way the government is mishandling some things. And I'm not saying any government because certain governments are doing more better than other ones. So you, you decide which government you're thinking of which can be exacerbating the problem, but also can be showing their true colors. You can see them for the either heroic leaders they are or the poor management team that they are. I'll be polite. I was going to get a lot worse. We're going to be polite. So that can be one of the side effects of this perspective on the virus experience because it's a, the thing about the virus is it tends not to have any... Um, well, actually, no, I can't say that. I was going to say the virus doesn't have any, um, there's a very, it's an equal opportunity offender, so to speak, but actually it's not true because certain parts of, the, of our culture are being more impacted because of their um, biological makeup, so to speak. But I have a question about that too. And again, what I'm talking about here is perspective and what I believe that is true. I could be wrong, <laughs> and I'm not trying to win, just being what I've been seeing. But another part of this virus is starting to show what I've been noticing a lot, actually, is where people are coming together to support each other. I was on a Zoom call a couple of days ago um, with one of the ministries I'm part of at my spiritual center, and we were checking in with each other, but some of the people who weren't in the meeting because they don't have 
laptops or computers. They have their phones. And so it's kind of like, okay, who's going to reach out to them and check in with them, see how they're doing? That sense of community, that sense of support is one of the positive side effects of this journey we're on right now. There are plenty of other ones out there. I'm not going to list all of them because I don't know all of them. There's been a lot of outgrowth of people starting to communicate. Actually, one other one I'll throw out this because I love it too, is that because of this now isolation that's been happening, there have been a lot of things on social media, be it on Instagram or Facebook and other places too, or YouTube, where people are getting together to create things together virtually. There have been quite a few musical creations where people have done things on Zoom, put them onto YouTube, where there could be 50, 100 people singing or playing instruments. There's actually a piece I saw a couple of weeks ago where there's an orchestra that is every single person is in their own place. But it's an absolutely beautiful orchestral piece played together by this, this wonderful classical um, orchestra or through Zoom. That may not have happened had it not been the isolation. Again, a positive side effect of this experience. So I'm going to give you a homework assignment, by the way, which is I'm going to invite you to look at where in your life things have gotten better because of what's happening. Maybe you've got to spend more time with the kids, or maybe you have a pet that now loves you more because you're spending all the time with them. Who knows? Maybe your diet's changed. Maybe you're finding, for me, one of the things I'm doing is actually I'm doing a lot, more, a lot more walks every day. I'm going out in the neighborhood and walking around to get some fresh air, get away from my computer. But I've actually met new neighbors I didn't know I had. That's a positive side effect. So I'm going to ask you to consider for yourself, and if you want to put, me the, put your thoughts or answers in the comments below, feel free to do so. What have you been experiencing during this time that has added to your life? It's been more positive. So let me wrap this up and tie in a little bow. Um, with all that's being put out informationally about what's going on, now, let's, let, let me um, supersede that by saying, in life in general, when you're given somebody's facts, somebody's righteous positioning and being they're right and you're not, be flexible. I've had to say to certain people, okay, you win. Because their ego was so attached to it, I didn't want to fight them on it. It wasn't worth it. I knew they weren't right, but I wasn't going to argue with them. Let them be right. Let them have their, their 30 seconds of ego boosting. But if you're in a position where you're holding on to right too tightly, watch that grip. Because if you notice when you really constrict your fist really, really tight, it's only really good for one or two things. When you let go of the tension and you let your hand open up, it's a quick metaphor, by the way, your hand is able to do many more things, manipulation, dexterity, things like you do, which you can do with your hands open. When it's fist, you can't do that. It's only really good for one thing, which may be violence. So the idea of being attached to a position, being fixated on a position, is that sense of being limited in your perspective. And by making other people wrong, it is an energetic, violent act. It is a mental one-upmanship, one-up-womanship. One whatever it is. So understanding that you have the choice, understanding that you can actually be flexible and not lose out. This is where the, this is a different piece. This is not about losing necessarily because the only way you can lose is if you believe you're wrong or that you screwed up or that you somehow judge yourself. And I've got a whole bunch of things I can teach you about how to get out of that and forgive yourself and be much happier. Not for this talk though. Understanding positioning as being a choice point, understanding that being right is a choice. You don't have to be attached to right. There is a deeper truth, which is another piece of, I can talk about another time, but which is beyond right and wrong. That's a different conversation entirely. But you have the choice to be flexible in your interaction with other people, being flexible in your attachments to right or wrong, for that matter, with other people, and understanding how that you start to learn more self-mastery, which is what I'm teaching, by the way, by noticing how you can navigate the world in a much more fluid way. All the piece was coming through, which is where is it? <laughs> it drops in and it goes out the door. Let me see if it comes back. Oh, yes. When you become less attached, this is a whole other conversation, but I'm going to give you a little seed of it now. When you're not attached to being right or being one up or one down, you start also to separate yourself from the um entanglement of codependency now I've talked about codependency in many many other talks and in my in my master in my um, mentorship course called self mastery mentorship and I'll, I'll put the link in the after you can check it out I do a whole bunch of teaching about how to dis um, disengage the trap of codependency this is part of that 
understanding to be, be more flexible, more fluid in your life. And if you want tips and keys on how to do this, I invite you to check out my Self Mastery Mentorship. It's my new offering. It's, been, it's an ongoing support structure. I'll put the link in the comments. You can check it out. Um, it's a monthly membership or annual membership. And it will be full of things like this in hands-on teaching and, and personalized coaching. Um, but codependency is another piece I talk about a lot, especially in your interaction with other people and especially in romantic relationships. This came out of my relationship coaching work a lot because it's so easy to fall in the trap of having some sense of um, needing another person to feel validated, which is codependency. So again, I'm not going to cover it in this talk because this is that's another piece of the puzzle. Again, link will be in the comments if you check it out. And I do invite you to do the homework I assigned and leave me a response in the comments of what you choose to do with that. What is it you found, as a reminder, that has been beneficial to you during the virus, during this experience of the coronavirus? How has your life changed, improved, or um, become nicer, for that matter, during this time? So that's your, that's your homework assignment. I invite you to check it out. The link will be in the comments for my mentorship. You can join me there. Uh, if you have any questions, comments, please message me, or just put the comments below and I'll respond after I sign off. This is my occasional talks. They're not every day. This is my occasional talks called Self Mastery. As you can tell by the number, it's not my first one. I've got a bunch of these out there. You can find those on my uh, business page. Also put my YouTube channel under Self Mastery. My YouTube channel, by the way, is my name. So youtube.com slash user slash Barry Selby. And in there is a playlist called Self Mastery. You can find all these talks. You can scan through those as well. And if you want any help, reach out to me. I hope this makes, I'm hoping this has made some sense to you. There's some valid, some valid points you can take with you and understanding. And uh, again, if you have any questions, reach out to me. My reminder to you, as always, through all of this journey, what we're going through, especially during this time, is please take care of yourself. With that, I'll see you again soon. Take care.